two teams here will become one team, become six. So always be a six versus three, okay? He's always passing to the team in possession. So I've made it clear to the players where the ball will restart from. That might be to the left-hand side of the halfway line or to the right-hand side. It's important that I was managing this and making it really clear to the players as early on in the practice as possible so they were able to adjust and take their positions from where the ball was restarting from. It would reverse. Make sense? I'm considering a touch restriction for the team of six. How many touches would you like to play with in the first game? There was a touch restriction because they were in a team of six, but also because I wanted to use this as an opportunity to give them a choice around how many touches they were restricted to. If they would have said a number like 10, I would have had to have managed that situation and potentially discussed with them the pros and cons of having different numbers of touches. Brilliant. As soon as you notice the ball gone here I had to just manage the players around their team shape, emphasising some in-possession principles like creating space. This enabled the practice to become more game-like and it helped them to relate the practice back to the 11-a-side game. Yeah, so potentially being an option for Robbie to pass to and then everyone else taking their shape off that player. So we've got some depth, some height and some width. So my question is, would you like to change the positioning of the mannequins? Giving the players an opportunity to move the mannequins makes them feel more engaged in the practice and it makes them feel like the challenge level is more relevant to them based upon their own perceptions of their competence and their levels of confidence. Now, I think their skill from the coach in these moments is to negotiate with the players and help the players to think about the advantages and disadvantages of where those mannequins might be placed. It's important to give the players time to play and this was a reason why I did four minute games and for four minutes there would be a team of six versus a team of three and these teams didn't change and that gave the team of three a little bit of motivation knowing they would only have to defend underloaded for four minutes until they got to change and become the team of six. Remember our shape? Team of six, stretch the pitch. There's no offsides. Wow, part, I love that pass, Morgan. It's important to continue to manage the practice and emphasise the principles I mentioned earlier around creating space and having the depth, the width and the height for the attacking team. There was clearly no offsides in this practice because there isn't a defensive unit. Much better stretching of the pitch. Team of six, really good. Team of six, really good. Making it hard for the Oranges now. Team of six, these are for you. So if you are in possession of the football in your team of six, it doesn't have to be you on the ball, it could be a teammate on the ball. It means you can pick up the bib. Okay, and what this bib means is that you can have unlimited touches. Now players have a choice whether they can use unlimited touches. What's interesting here is which players choose to use this and which players don't. And when they do choose it, how do they use their touches best? What benefits would that bring you? Brilliant. Dictating the tempo of the game. Really good answer, yeah. So that's going to bring you time, control the tempo, OK? Also allows you to practice different skills because you're going to have unlimited touches on the ball. Play! So now we can use this as a mechanism to help us win games. Okay, so at any moment, so I just done it, I just paused. By giving players and teams the opportunity to pause, it encourages them to be thinking about how they're doing in the practice and reflecting on what progress they have made and what things they might want to enhance in their game. And the reason why I said that they must pause in each of the games is because sometimes players forget to pause. I was quite firm with this, but I did say that we would deliberate on whether the win would be taken off you. Again, providing another conversation if that moment would occur. OK. Brilliant. Now, that's the kind of thinking and ideas that we need to be getting our head into. So what you've done there, you've recognised how to get an advantage in the game, which is, that's football. We need to think about how we get advantages in games. If it gets to the end of the game and you haven't used a pause, 
we will deliberate on whether to give you the win or not. You're halfway through the game and you haven't paused yet. It's important to remind players that they have the option to pause because they might easily forget. And then when they do pause, being firm of the 60 second time limit. So it helps them to communicate more efficiently, more effectively and be more decisive whilst not lacking any thought process behind their decision. The rest of you, you might just want some sort of discussion about how you're going to win the game. You've got 60 seconds to talk. Maybe. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, you know if you do last goal wins. Yeah. Is that from now or is that like from now? Yeah. Let's do it. Yep. Back in the game. Do you want to know what they chose? Last goal wins. No way. Ten seconds in the game left. Orange's last chance to score a goal. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And relax. Oranges, talk me through your thought process around last goal wins. It's important to spend time reviewing with the players after they've utilised one of the pauses because it's an opportunity for them to consider how that pause affected the way they played. And then also, from the other team's point of view, it enables them to gain some insight into how that team were thinking. Change your performance then. Yeah. I think it did, didn't it? Like, I think... Would it be fair to say that you maybe lost a bit of discipline out of possession because you were pressing and jumping really quickly, like really early. And then probably like, did you notice that was easy for you to play through the team of six? Yeah. Yeah. So I guess like it probably wasn't the wrong choice of like doing that, but maybe like your, your strategy to make that work wasn't quite there. Because um, in a real game, if you were underloaded, would you be likely pressing high or likely be? Yeah. You're halfway through the game. You have a pause left. Pause. Oranges. Take a rest, have a pause. I tell you what, Blues. That was so much better defending than your first round of defending. So here the Oranges have paused, but I have taken some time to give feedback to the Blues and praise them for the way they've defended underloaded. This allowed the other team to discuss which of the different options they would like without me present. And this actually is quite advantageous because hopefully what they're saying isn't because I am standing there. Yeah, just to let you know, they've swapped ends. Good compactness, Blues. Really good, Blues. Can we get pressure on the ball when we need to? Good, good. Yes, Blues. And we get back in, Blues. It's fine. It's good defending. Very good defending. We look early. Tell you what, because you pressed and you showed her outside, it made it really like easy for her to read that and then win it back. So well done. Pause. You've got 15 seconds left of the game, Blues. I reckon. Hey, excellent shape from you guys. The concentration now is excellent. Really good. Who took the one in the uh, chest, by the way? Was... Well done. The block, the big block. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> what are you going for and why? Wait, uh, that's what ought to me, that. No, no. Yeah. It's got, we've got 15 seconds. seconds. 15 seconds. What's, the, what's going to be the strategy to win then? Because last time when a team of three cheated, they pressed really aggressively. So what Probably are you going to be wait doing? For the, wait for the triggers, like a dodgy yeah. touch or something, to try and get on that. Right. So see when you win it back, what's your attacking strategy? Run. Yeah. Run. Because <laughs> where do you expect to win the ball back? In our, in our little Quite room. deep, yeah. yeah. Ten. Nine. So again, the, the blue team defending underloaded. You can see that they have now considered their strategy a little bit more and been more compact, slightly deeper and harder to play through. Go on, Sam. Five. Four. Three. There's still three seconds left. Three. Two. One, well done. You gave it a good go, Blues. Great work. Blues, I thought you performed the best out of the whole session in that last game.
thought you'd done really well. Okay. Nice, please. Well done. Really good.